The first season of Telltale's Batman series was flawed, but it still did a lot right, and I overall enjoyed it. So now that the second instalment entitled The Enemy Within has reached its final episode, does it improve upon what came before? Well, let's find out. This game was announced in July last year and was to be released merely a couple of weeks later. While I was excited to be returning to this version of the Cape Crusader, the sudden announcement and the fact that it hadn't even been a year since Season 1 made its debut made me concerned that the enemy within had been rushed. But was it? Well, there's no better place to start than with the first episode, The Enigma. Okay! It begins with Bruce Wayne investigating a casino when an old adversary from Gotham's past being none other than the Riddler shows up and takes the owner hostage in a saw-like trap. Bruce dons the cowl of the Cape Crusader once again and takes on the criminals. The Riddler escapes just as an agency called the Agency Really creative name that, huh? Interrupts the police work as new recruits of the law, run by Amanda Waller. Batman discovers a mysterious box and... Really, I should stop there. This episode alone is filled with enough twists and turns to populate an M. Night Shyamalan film. And as someone who went into the season with trepidation, I have to say, this first episode blew me away. Even the presentation really surprised me, with better graphics, less robotic animations, and a much grander score. But with presumably little time to make the episode, how did Telltale one-up themselves so incredibly well? With most of the cast already established from the first season, the game immediately plunges into more interesting territory, whilst introducing us to some great new characters, one of which being a rare, intimidating version of the Riddler. The cast and the plot twist really kept me engaged, along with the gameplay and the choices, both of which also received an upgrade. The combat is a little less frantic, with choices added to the fights, which are really well thought out action set pieces. Seeing as the Riddler is the main villain of the episode, there's also some decent puzzles. They're not that challenging, but they do require some brain power and are overall pretty good. Throughout the season, there's also a couple of parts where you need to explore the environment, which is kind of the substitute for detective work, and like the rest of the gameplay, it does a good job keeping the game from becoming a movie where you have a say in certain events. And while we're on the subject of choices, whilst I was playing, I genuinely thought my decisions were having an impact on the story. After replaying the episode with someone else, I realised the effect wasn't as big as I thought, but at the end of the episode, along with key choices, it came up with how each character feels about Bruce slash Batman, showing just how important the relationships are in the game. Besides, I'll be bringing up the choices again later on. Anyway, I loved this first episode, and after ending on a great cliffhanger, I was really excited for the rest of the season to unfold. But did it continue the streak of greatness set up by its first episode? Well, without giving too much of the enigma away, Bruce now finds himself going undercover for the agency to stop a band of criminals whose trust he must gain with the help of John Doe. Whilst Gordon and Waller fight for control of the authorities, with the latter having complete control over Batman due to knowing a very personal secret. That's a really good setup, and everything surrounding the characters we've been introduced to is really compelling stuff. But for the next two episodes, Telltale shoved most of them to the side to develop the new villains, those being Harley Quinn, Bane, and Mr. Freeze. That's all fine and dandy, but despite an attempt to flesh them out, they're just not that interesting, particularly Mr. Freeze. Bane is a little better, he gets a bit more to do, but both these characters lack the same freshness given to many of the other people in this entire series. Harley Quinn, however, does, as the roles are reversed in her romance with the Joker, I mean John. That makes for a good change, but it doesn't help that she's really annoying. Her lispy voice is grating and her personality really got on my nerves, to the point where I actively tried to make her dislike me. I swear, it'll make your whole body shiver. Oh, just <sighs> shut up! No thanks, I'm good. Ha! Please hate me now! And considering a good chunk of episodes 2 and less so 3 are spent with these characters, I have to admit, the game does suffer from a mid-season sag. Thankfully, the last two episodes really pick things up, and although Telltale never quite reached the heights of the first episode again, this is still a really strong story overall. 
excluding the subpar group of villains, everyone else is well developed, and the ones that were in the first season are taken in interesting new directions. The relationships that you develop with the characters really is the centre of the game, as I found myself with less incentive to pick one I thought would be the right choice to make, but rather I tried to mend each character's stance of Bruce, with only the final choice affecting his own personal life, but it makes for a dramatic end to the season. And then we have John Doe. What you mould him into can change the shape of the final episode, which has two different versions depending on the choices you made to him throughout the entire season, which is really good replay value. Actually, outside of the final episode, I've noticed how you can actually get different scenes if certain choices are made, which once again encourages replaying the game. But at the end of the day, each and every player will see the same basic story unfold, yet it does feel like even little decisions can have an impact on where you stand with certain characters and getting different scenes, which is a huge improvement to the overall experience. And it's worth mentioning that the gameplay remains strong throughout the season as well. It's not used massively, but as mentioned before, the fighting's good, there's some decent puzzles, some okay detective work, and there's even some minor stealth towards the end, which caught me off guard. Literally. Hey, it's a <laughs> Episode 1 began this season in spectacular style, with great improvements made to the gameplay backed by a gripping story. Episode 2 falls a little flat when compared to what came before, thanks to some underwhelming villains. The third does improve things by bringing the focus back to the more interesting characters, four is really strong with some great scenes, and the fifth and final is a really great conclusion to the season with some really unexpected twists. Now as you can tell, the season has a few lulls throughout, but honestly, the highs are just too high. The stuff that's good in this game can honestly rival the Arkham games at times, and the positives definitely outweigh the negatives in this fantastic season. The quality jump from season 1 to 2 is insane, with great presentation that complements a gripping story with engaging characters that I really enjoy trying to mould. It has its flaws and parts of it are considerably better than others, but when it's great, it's really, really great. And the entire season as a whole gets a 90%. The ending leaves it unclear as to whether or not there'll be a third season, but if there is, I'm definitely on board to don the mask of Telltale's Dark Knight once again.